I just finished an online class from MIT called Mastering Design Thinking and it was one of the best online class experience I've ever had. I never had any interaction before that with MIT so I definitely can say they live up to their name, the brand, what it stands for. What was interesting was my wife was doing a class at eCornell and even from my outside perspective it was one of the most frustrating experiences she went through and I had some frustrating experiences in the past but if you're looking into online classes highly recommend MIT. But we're not here to talk about the class even though I will link it in the description we're here talking about the end results of that class which is you pick farm fresh food fast free which is a project that we have taken from idea ideation into kind of like a MVP that you could launch and MIT taught us to go by the model in the end is it real is the opportunity real can we win it and is it worth it to pursue and I'm gonna let you be the judge of it um, for a little bit but I will tell you the rationale and what we've done to get here now the topic when we signed up for the class, each of us had to submit two topics of interest. Then we voted in the groups that uh, we were put in. And one of the ideas that got, or that our team selected was how we could create a more sustainable and reliable food supply chain, obviously inspired by recent events globally, but also because of the energy. Because for example, in the US, 60% of energy in agriculture goes towards gasoline, electricity, and other forms of energy to produce it and transport those foods. And so one of the first parts when you have a topic of interest is to interview people, to see what is the actual needs of the users, and not just asking them, but observing them, because often there is what they call lemon needs, which means needs that they may not can verbalize or is hard to uncover in a conversation, but they're still there. Those seem almost like the best exciting needs to solve. It's not the best per se, but I found it extremely exciting what we learned across that. And so each of our groups set out to talk to a whole bunch of people and get their feedback. And then based on that feedback, we kind of like came up with a list of everything that people told us. It was super interesting for me. I talked to a retail employee who taught me about how it is to restock the produce aisle, how much more important it is to have perfect looking produce than anything else than food waste, for example, and just throw it out and there is no incentive to bag them and sell them as less perfect food. I talked to the person who once led a program on the Microsoft campus to grow local food, which was interesting. I didn't know him before um, when I pinged him because he just started at LinkedIn. That was exciting to see. I learned about hydroponic growing, the journey Microsoft was on. So needless to see lots of different needs. And so did my team members have a lot of interesting conversation, as you can see on this slide. Now, at this point, we established there is an opportunity to reduce the energy used, to reduce food waste and challenges that users have. For producers, it was a lot about that regulations could be a block to sell things. It could be that um, they don't have a direct access to consumers. They have to go through grocery stores. So that can be a challenge because then the grocery store, as I mentioned, only wants that perfect looking produce. But if you were to make homemade applesauce or an apple pie, actually it doesn't matter if the apple is bruised, you just cut out the bruise and you can still use the rest of the fruit. And so we set out on that journey to try to see, okay, what do we think we can solve for address? And obviously the, in, the, in the beginning, the ideas go wild, right? like everything. And then you try to narrow it down because you're gonna have to start somewhere. And so we came up with this idea called you pick, which would build that bridge between the producers and the consumer, give them direct access. We found a lot of uh, producers get taught or blogs that say, always know your distribution channel first before you invest heavily in producing things. And so we looked at this and you can see here a few studies that buying local is a top priority among almost half of American consumers and that the 73% of Americans currently trying to include locally sourced food in their diets. And so there's definitely an opportunity, there's definitely user needs around that. 
So we came up with this idea of an app, kind of like the Facebook marketplace, if you will, for local produce. You could also call it the Airbnb for produce because the idea behind this is that even you, if you had like your own garden and you have a lot of tomato or a lot of cucumbers that you could put it on to sell it. And so there's like two sides of it, the producer side and the consumer side. As a consumer side, there's gonna be a lot of recipes that can educate you with things in season or things that there's a lot of it around from local producers, what you could do with it from apple pie recipes to anything else you can think of. And users are encouraged to publish their own recipes and get points for it, kind of like rewards. Those rewards you can use to pay for a produce that you actually buy. And so you see, you have a news feed, you see who is around you, what can you buy. And so in the beginning, it would just be basically that bridge between the gap between producers and consumer. If you're a producer, you would see what are people buying on the platform? Like, oh, everybody wants strawberry as an example. Or you see, oh, a lot of people want potato, but there is actually not a lot of potato. So you would also see what's the inventory that if you can influence it in the decision of what you want to focus on producing in that area of your gardens, you have an idea of what is a lot there and what is lacking right now. And then over the long term, it also would be the idea to give you tips on how to grow or increase the output in a good, healthy way. And so those are the two sides they can interact with each other. Now we looked at, is there anything else that already does it, right? <laughs> is there other apps? We found this one app. It, it touches a little bit on what we're doing, but it's kind of high price, a high entry level, um, because you have to order, I think, for more than $99 to get it um, for free delivery and things like that. And it really, from our point of view, scratches just the surface where we think we have way more rounded options, again, focusing on helping the producers and the consumers where we think we're unique in the market. So we definitely believe it hasn't been done yet and we believe it can address real needs right now. And so when we looked at the business side of the house, the business model, is it worth it? When we took at how many users we think we would get, we focused it on three key markets in the beginning. We only figured, and this was very conservative, if we have four transactions per user a year, over a six year period, we would have a positive NVP of 1.3 million NPV. And so from a financial purpose, it actually, from a financial point of view, it makes sense to do it. And so if we were to summarize it in that model, is it real? It's definitely real. There is a lot of consumers that are concerned here in this statistic. It was 73%. Can we win it? Yes, there is nothing that basically fulfills that across the board. And is it worth it? We believe so. And while you can see some of the quotes at the bottom, one are from Anahai, which was very exciting for us because she was one member of the faculty we presented this to. She said she would definitely um, use it in Boston. But would you? Is this something you think you would use it? Let me know in the comments. And even other side is it, would you just use it or would you invest in this? Would you think, hey, this solves a real need? I might invest in this. I might think they actually are onto something. Even in that case, I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the description, give me a thumbs up, share it with your folks. I would love to get as much input as possible. And with that, D. Dave Kurt out.